Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank I once heard the story, I think it's a popular story in the Christian faith, about a man who boarded a ship and part of that ship there was a package for his meal. Have you heard that story? And the man was more than grateful to get into the ship. And for days, he was scrounging the little um, food that he held. And his table was vacant. And when he was almost dying, he was told that there had been provision for more. This is how it is with many believers. We do not know that there can be more, that our Christian experience can become richer, that we can become a lot spiritual than we are. And, and that which I seek to teach tonight will help us to understand this so that we do not just get born again and stand at the gate of the kingdom and not press deeper. Hallelujah. Now, according to scriptures, please write, the Bible reveals to us, spiritually speaking, that there are three categories of people, three types of man, as far as it has to do with our walk with God. The Bible reveals to us clearly that at any given point in time, you will find three kinds of people. Number one is what the Bible calls the natural man. The natural man. Number two, the Bible calls this second kind of man the carnal man. The carnal man. Number three, he calls the third kind of man the spiritual man. And this is very interesting. Please follow me. So the Bible tells us that when God is speaking through the word, he's speaking to three kinds of people. There are words that are directed to natural people. There are words that are directed to carnal people. There are words that are directed to spiritual people. And I believe that one of the challenges in the body of Christ is that we have not been accurately taught what I call the path of spiritual progress. The transitions from the natural man, the exact spiritual requirement that it takes for you to leave the realm of a natural man to the next phase. And that when you are in that second phase, Many of us have not been taught exactly the spiritual pathway that transforms men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Hallelujah. And I truly am convinced that part of the reason why many believers are not strong in the spirit and cannot do much for the kingdom is because they have not been taught the spiritual pathway 
that transits men from being carnal to being spiritually deep. Now, it's very sad that we don't agree over many things in the body of Christ. And we just thank God for his grace and his faithfulness. I think that one of the things that we all agree over in the body of Christ is the condition of being born again. If you confess Jesus Christ, you confess, you believe that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. Every sect, every denomination believes that and there is no argument about that. The moment that you satisfy that condition, you are accepted across every denomination. But after that, we almost don't agree on anything again. And so there has been confusion through the years as to the exact path of spiritual progress. Hallelujah. And tonight, the teaching is an attempt to bring us into that understanding. I truly believe that this holds the key to our deeper and our richer work with God. I read a book by a man who was acclaimed to be the 21st century prophet, a man called A.W. Toza. The Pursuit of God. Powerful book. These were men whose dimensions of spiritual understanding was amazing. I have read many books. I have been built by so many people in the body of Christ. But there are certain people that their teachings and their spiritual paradigm has left a mark upon my life that will never be erased. Their understanding about God is so accurate. When you study their writings, you know that these people encountered God. Hallelujah. There are so many books in the body of Christ attempting to answer different questions about the pursuit of God. And the challenge is that, you see, when hunger meets error, it becomes a very unfortunate thing in the spirit. There are many believers who are hungry. We come to God, we come to church, and we say, I am thirsty. Lord, reveal more. You see, when you are hungry, you are like a baby whose mouth is opened. Anything that can fill you, you will take it and swallow it sincerely. Hallelujah. And many of us, that's the journey that begun the error that we have come into. We, have, we delved into it sincerely. When we got born again, there were probably no good Christian groups and fellowships around us to build us accurately. And so everything that looked like light, we ran to it and we poured our lives to receive it. And that little that we had is what we are holding on to today. But the unfortunate part is that some of what we received is not the accurate truth. So I sincerely pray from the depths of my heart that God will open our eyes so that our spiritual progress will be accurate and that at the end of our journey we will not have regrets as to why we did not attain the full stature of being spiritual men. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so we have learned a lot of things. And um, I have seen that there is a cancer that is eating believers up. And that cancer, in one word, is called the flesh. It's a cancer that has been responsible for the downfall of many mighty men. Please open your heart tonight because the Lord is going to talk to you very seriously. Hallelujah. Everyone say the flesh. We're going to examine what is this spiritual cancer that is able to impede people and stop them from becoming spiritual. 
Grant us grace in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me true and true till my heart becomes a home for you. If you know the song, just sing it one more time. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. First Corinthians 2 from verse 14. Verse 14. In fact, let's start from verse 13. First Corinthians 2, let's start from verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom, that man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 14. Everyone read. One to read. Stop. So the Bible tells us there is a man called what? The natural man. But the natural man cannot receive what the things of the spirit why for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because spiritual things are spiritually discerned are you following me now so this is the first kind of man the bible seeks to explain to us he is called the natural man and the bible gives us certain traits it doesn't leave us in confusion to guess who that man is. It says the natural man is one who has not yet sustained the capacity to understand spiritual things. They are foolishness unto him. He cannot know them because he has not been quickened to discern spiritual things. In one word, the natural man is one who has not met Jesus Christ. The natural man is what we call the unbeliever. I don't want to use that word because there are Christians that are still unbelievers. Hallelujah. So the natural man is one who has not met the Lord Jesus Christ. He has not come to the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the way. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. So the natural man is one who has not truly had the encounter of regeneration. The word regeneration comes from the word regene. To record you again. Regene. It's a new encoding. A changing of your spiritual configuration. Hallelujah. That's the first kind of man. And the Bible says for those kinds of people, there is nothing spiritual 
that ever makes sense to them. Hallelujah. They consider the faith work foolishness. They consider every spiritual activity foolishness. Some of us were like that before Christ found us. Alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. The commonwealth of Zion. Hallelujah. Everything that was of God was, an, it was a thing of mockery. We laughed at spiritual things. This man has an eternal destiny. The name of the place is hellfire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even if this man has been in church all his life, even if his father is a pastor, even if they baptized him in water, for as long as he has not met Jesus Christ, he is going to hell if he dies. Is there any confusion about that? So that we can move forward. Any confusion? The natural man has an eternal destiny. He is going first to hell and will later be relocated to the lake of fire. Hallelujah. That means if you are here and you have not met Jesus Christ, I wish it were a lie, but it's true. You are going to hell. If you don't repent, there is no other way to say it. I'm, I'm very sorry. I would have said you will go to a place that is not nice. It would have been a nice way. But let me tell you the truth and take me seriously. The Bible says this. I am the way. I am the truth. Can we get back to the basics of Christianity? I am the life. Not your pastor. Not your prophet. Not anointing oil. Are you getting what I'm saying? Placing an anointing oil on you does not make you a Christian. Soaking you in water, in baptism does not make you a Christian. I, I, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Because we need to redefine the condition for true salvation. A prophet of God speaking a word over you to say your sins are forgiven does not take you to heaven. Hello? I want all of us to get to heaven. So I want us to probe so that if you belong to this category, and your conviction about your being saved is because of some of these things I'm saying. Let's clean up the air so that you will know. There is what we call, they used to teach us in Sunday school, called assurance of salvation. Did they teach you? Not salvation. Assurance of salvation. That you can know that if the trumpet sounds today, by the way, there is a real trumpet and it will sound. Let's be careful as we progress spiritually and we seek to edit some of these things out. I hear men of God who speak and say there's nothing like the book of life. You know that statement? Write my name in the book of life. Yeah, forget it. There's nothing like that. <laughs> we will know one day but I can tell you there is a book of life. The Bible says books were opened and another book a master book was opened. And the name of that book, it didn't leave us to any theological guessing. It said the name of that book is the book of life. And whosoever's name, pastor, apostle, koinonia member, prayer band member, revivalist, whosoever's name was not found in that book. The Bible tells you that you are cast into the lake of fire. It's as simple as that. What's that man's song? Is your name in the book of life? Serious question. Is your name? Sing it. Is my name? See, let me tell you. You know, there are many believers who think that your confidence is equal to salvation. I won't go to hell. 
I'm going to heaven. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you are not saved, brothers and sisters, hear me. There is a name for you. The Bible calls you what? The natural man. This is not my message. I'm just digressing to press it in so that you will know and you will care. Brothers and sisters, I know that we have been taught not to scare people with the revelation of judgment that there is judgment day. Don't scare people so that their coming to Christ will not be out of fear. But the only issue is that it is true. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Heaven and earth will pass away. But not one word, not one word will fail. I really want us to truly, truly, before we even progress, examine our salvation. The Bible says to examine ourselves so that you are sure that if Jesus comes today, he will make heaven. If you know right now that if the trumpet sounds, you are going to heaven, Stand up. If you are not sure, no problem. I'm serious. We are not playing games in this place. Please, you know that we are very serious. If you are sure that if the trumpet sounds right now, right now as we speak, you are going, you know we can fake it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That if the trumpet sounds now, right now, together, we are going to be with Jesus Christ in the air. That is one of the greatest assurance. You are sure you are going to graduate, but that is inferior to your eternal destiny. You are sure you are going to get married. You are sure you are going to be healed. You are sure you are going to be delivered. But brothers and you are even sure you will be successful. But can I be sincere with you? If you are not sure of your salvation, it's time to deal with it. And I'm going to talk to you. I will tell you what the condition to make heaven is. Please and please, I owe you that responsibility under God. Thank you for giving to the Lord. Keep standing. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so in the course of ministering. I have had the privilege to stand before people a few minutes before they die. I have had the privilege to comfort families that have been bereaved. Some families of members here. Some families around that I'm connected to. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hold the phone and hear families cry as their loved ones pass on. I've had the opportunity to look at people for the last time. I've had advanced knowledge where God told me this person is not going to make it. He's going to die. The Bible says if our hope is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. If you've never thought about this thing this year, I want you to think about it for one minute. Jesus Christ is truly coming back. Please, in case you have been told that it will not happen, let me guarantee you there is an event that is going to happen in this earth. And every prophecy, every single prophecy that needs to, be, to come to pass for the coming of Jesus Christ has been fulfilled. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it seriously. Every prophecy. There are people who have had visions of the coming of Christ. There are people who have had visions. I'm just reminding you that there is more to this life. This physical life that you see. 
And as you walk up and down your daily activity, if you are not sure that if Jesus Christ comes, we will be caught up. Let me tell you how it will happen. Please sit down. Everybody open your Bible. First Thessalonians, please. Paul had a revelation of what is going to happen and I'm going to show you. First Thessalonians 4. We are talking about the natural man. As far as I'm concerned, this is the most important thing. The natural man should know. First Thessalonians 4. From verse 13. 4 verse 13. Please let's hurry up so that we can beat time. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. Everyone look up. It's projected. Paul is talking to the church in Thessalonica. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant. That means part of the revelations of the kingdom Paul wants us to have is the knowledge about how the coming of Christ is going to be. Brethren, so he's speaking to believers, concerning them which are asleep, that's those who have died. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also, which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So Paul is not speaking his opinion. He's speaking by the word of the Lord. That which we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. That means the day that Jesus Christ is going to come, there will still be people who will be alive in the earth. Are you getting me? Not everyone is going to have died as in gone to the grave. So he's giving us, Paul is painting a picture on how the rapture will be. Verse, verse 16. For the Lord himself for who? The owner of the earth. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. Now, which of the archangels we are not told exactly. But the Bible tells us Paul was speaking that on that day Jesus himself will descend from the heaven of heavens and will come upon this very physical earth. And it says there will be a shout, the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. That means a trumpet is going to sound. A shofar will blow. And the first thing that will happen in that great ceremony is that the dead in everybody say dead in one more time so it's not only those who are alive in Christ a man can also be dead in Christ that he served God with his whole life and he believed and accepted the lordship of Jesus Christ I bring you a message of hope. For those of you who have lost loved ones, brothers and sisters, if they gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a name for them. The Bible says they are dead but in Christ. That means a day will come, there will be a glorious reunion. Hallelujah. So the dead in Christ will be the first to rise. 17. Then, we, which are alive, and remain, shall do what? We shall be caught up, with them, in the clouds. Let me explain to you, what will happen. All of this that you see, will happen in split seconds. Hallelujah. Split 
seconds of earth's time. It will be faster than the speed of light. There will be that sound. There's no time I would have shown you that unbelievers are not going to hear that sound. Because he, Jesus gave us a revelation. He said, my sheep hear my voice. That means if you didn't hear it, it was not for you. It's as simple as that. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> the Bible says two people will be lying down. Two roommates in Ribadu will be lying down. And one will be taken and leave the stubborn roommate who is not paying attention to the things of God and thinks I don't care. You get up and say, uh-uh. Where did my roommate go to? We have checked out of this earth. A day is coming. The greatest catastrophe that has happened to the earth is not all of the tsunami and the disappearance. Imagine how many pilots are going to go. You think they will stay? Once you hear that sound, you are leaving. The sound does something to your spirit, man. At once... All the graves. That was the revelation that was adumbrated in Ezekiel 37. People who have been maimed. Jews that were killed by Adolf Hitler. Bones that have been scattered. Matthias that were beheaded at once. That sound. That sound will do a quickening. The same way Christ was raised from the dead. The Holy Ghost will demonstrate his sovereignty at its best to resurrect every man who is dead in Christ within a split second. And they will rise up with glorified bodies. Watch this. And that time, some of us who are alive, I pray that it happens during koinonia. While we are seated, maybe we are worshipping. All of a sudden, I will leave my Bible for you my phone. Hallelujah. We we'll leave the drums, keyboard. There will still be a few people seated. And they'll wonder what is happening. Those who laugh at us right now. And laugh at our fanatism for the kingdom. And think that life is all about money. And cars. And houses. Huh? and marriage and will not give priority to spiritual things. I am not telling you a fairy tale. We are closer to the coming of Christ right now than before Koinonia started. And it's a very good news. If it's a bad news for you, you are the natural man. It is not supposed to be a bad news. When people die, we write transition it's a transition. So we who are alive, all of a sudden, this body that is limited, suddenly, immortality is perfected upon this body. We will no longer carry this material. The clothes that we will wear will no longer be removed. There will be robes. They are called garments of praise. They are garments in the spirit. And we will join the king of kings. His feet is not going to touch the earth. He will stand in, He will come with his own cloud. His own realm. Mm. And all of a sudden you will see your grandfather. You will see all the missionaries that were wounded in Nigeria. The ones who were killed in Calabar. The ones that were killed in different crises. We see all kinds of things. And together we will arise. And for the first time, you will look at the earth from heaven's perspective and truly see that it is shadow. Every time we're on the air, I have the privilege to look down and you see houses like, you know how children make toys. Whereas somebody will say, I must build this thing. If not, I won't trust you. From heaven's perspective, people steal so that they can build that little object. And you see people moving like ants. That is from, from a view in the sky. 
Imagine how God looks at everyone. And he said, if I don't build this house, oh Lord, you wait. And he's saying, are you not wise? Have you not heard that there are mansions in heaven? It was not a prophetic statement. There are real mansions. There are people who have gone there. There are mansions. There are mansions. We will be caught up. We will leave all the countries. They will elect themselves. They will fight themselves. There will be a lot of vacancy. ABU Senate, no more admission. Some of your lecturers will come for lecture that morning only to find out that CNN will carry the most shocking news ever seen in human history. This day will put it new Nigeria punch this nation massive disappearance of people all of a sudden it will occur to those you preach to who laughed at you that this, this person said this by the time they are saying it we will wave this earth goodbye I look forward to that time it's a very good experience do you know what it means that you are relieved from this body of sorrow? No thinking about all of these kinds of things. It's making some of you afraid because preachers have run away from it because they are not sure they are going to heaven. Don't talk about it. We're already going. We must talk about it. You talk about your house you are hoping for break or strike or something so that you will run home. This world is not my home. Remember that country music. Powerful songs. Right now we dodge them. We sing all kinds of songs. I must make it. God is holding my hand and I must make it. These are the kinds of songs we write. Nothing at all that reminds us that we are leaving this realm. This is already a message. For someone, this is, your, this is your word from the Lord tonight. That you should sit down and think about your life. I can stand as a preacher and deceive men. But on that day, all of a sudden you will see bishops and pastors still in the earth. And the members will say, Pastor, you say, please don't. The Bible will once again become the bestseller. Because everybody, whether you believe in Christ or not, it will no longer be an instrument of devotion. It will be the roadmap for the next level of prophecy. Every church on earth will be jam-packed. At that point, every business will close their shop by force. When there is nobody you must, whether you are selling tire, whether you are an iron bender, whatever you are doing, you will pack up your business and run to church. And everybody will sit in church hoping that that is the place where the rapture will happen. Whereas it has happened. All of a sudden, within 24 hours, a strange man will appear on your TV. And you say, well, calm down. It's true that some people have gone, but... Let there be peace. And the Bible calls him the Antichrist. Not an Antichrist. He is the Antichrist. At that point, the Bible says, men will run and beg the mountain to fall on them. You are afraid of bicycle hitting your leg. But the Bible says, even death will run away. Death will say, I've tried. That's it. Mission accomplished. Yes, read your Bible. Men will run to the mountain. People will carry knives to kill themselves and will not die. The Bible says the, in Revelation, I thought we'll be able to do it this year, but we may do it. We may not be able to do it this year. Eschatology, there is a whole teaching on it. A four-part series on the end time. Hallelujah. I'm just giving you, am I boring you? You better say no because this cannot be boring when your eternal destiny is tied to it. Some of us, this is a revelation. God has been talking to you. 
Calm down with the issue of wanting to make it and think about your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Churches will still be full. There will still be men of God doing live telecasts whereas the rapture has happened. Some will even be making altar calls. I mean what I'm saying and I'm very serious about it. Yet there are some people, some quiet mothers who have been praying like Anna the prophetess looking forward to the consolation. When that happens, some of the cleaners in our churches who we have disrespected, before you know it, they will leave the rag for you there and leave. Some of the house helps we have ill-treated, they will go and leave all of us. The door of CBN will be wide open to go and pack all the money. All the security people, the banks will be there. The bulk room will be open. Go and pack. And then you will hear that there is a new technology for buying and selling. The Antichrist will introduce a new code of conduct. Joshua Selman! For where? Yes, God. And I will turn there and I'll see Lawrence. I'll say, You made it. Oh, I pray that you will turn and see your father, your mother. And you say, Where is my sister? And there will be joy. No matter how antisocial you are, there must be joy because you will turn and see someone and you will suddenly turn and see the person who led you to Christ but has died and you will look at him and we will all be young. No competition of I'm fine, you are not. We will all be fine. Leave this body with all the deficiencies that this realm brought for us and will arise in a glorified body. Question. Will your father be there? Will your mother be there? Yes, you may be there. There are people in my life, I'm sorry to say it, I know they will not be there. Based on the truth of God's word, they died without Jesus Christ. Some of them, we had the privilege to talk to them. And they didn't take it seriously. And they died. There are people you spoke to. They didn't know that you were so close. And they didn't listen. And they died. With my mouth. Will I make it known. That's why we have to preach. From the rising of the sun. Right until it's going down. I will sing. Of the mercies of the Lord. There will be churches. That more than half of the congregation will be dancing and singing praise and worship. And they are not gone. Because they never took seriously the issue of salvation. They thought it's a basic thing. There will even be men of God sharing revelations. And all of a sudden they will find out that the earth looks empty. The weight of the earth will reduce. Because people have left. Revelation says... That there was 30 minutes silence in heaven. You know why? The, the shock in heaven. Because of the seven vials. That was about to be poured upon the earth. The Bible says one third of the vegetation of the earth. Will be destroyed. You were taught about ecosystems. Right in biology. Imagine what happens to the earth. When one third of the vegetation is destroyed. It's not a prophetic statement. It will happen. No buying indomie until the mark of the beast is there. No nothing. No matter how you hide. We have GPS. What do they call it? GPRS. GPS. They will find you. No hiding. The question I want to ask you right now. Again is, are you going to make it? This is not to scare you. What then is the condition to make heaven? What condition transits you from being a sinner to being a righteous person in Christ?
Romans chapter 8. Sorry, chapter 10. I'll begin to read from verse 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Here's the condition. That if thou shalt what? Confess. Not assume. Confess. Verbalize. With your mouth. The Lordship of Jesus Christ. And if you believe it, that means it is possible to confess what you do not believe. Is that true? So, you must first believe in your heart that this is true. Jesus came and died. He shed his blood for my sins. He was given as a propitiation, as an exchange. What I could not do for myself. Jesus came as the ransom, the lamb that shed his blood for my sins. He said, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, what is the, the result? Thou shalt be saved. Next verse. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And then with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Has this happened to you? I know you have spoken. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, I believe in you. I believe you died, I believe you died. And you are pinching people all around. The Bible says, do you believe in your heart? Was it a sincere statement? Do you truly believe that Jesus died? Do you believe that he shed his blood? He took your place in death that you may take his place in life. Do you believe that he defeated sin? He defeated Satan? He broke the power of sin. Do you believe that he offers you new life? And if you believe it, have you acknowledged it? If you have not done that, if Jesus comes today, you are going to hellfire. Hallelujah. So before we continue, I'm going to give us five minutes. And I'd like us to pray from the depths of your heart, every one of us, and say, Lord, I commit myself. Commit myself. I want to be sure that on this day, this decision is true in my life. Jesus, Son of God. Pray. I believe in you. I believe in you. I call you my Messiah, Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. Pray from the depths of your heart. I believe that Jesus died. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. Oh, I believe. I believe in life and in death. This becomes my conviction. Jesus, Son of God. I may not believe many things about the Christian faith, but I believe this one. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. With my heart, I believe that Jesus died. Jesus paid the price. I believe the truth of God's word. I believe that Jesus came. He was born of the Virgin Mary. 
I believe that he suffered. I believe that he went to the cross. I believe he hung on that cross for me. I believe that he was pierced with those nails for my sins. I believe he said it is finished. I believe he was buried and he went to hell and collected the keys of death, hell and the grave. I believe that on the third day he resurrected. I believe that he's alive today and he offers me the gift of righteousness. Oh, and I've received it by faith. Jesus, Son of God. most important decision in your life when the road is called up yonder 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 When the road is called up yonder, when the road, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. In two minutes. I like you to cry for your family members that you know you know they are going to hell lift your voice and pray don't pretend it some of us our kind fathers are still going to hell when all is said and done when all is said and done your degree means nothing your prosperity means nothing when all is said and done when all is said and done there are some of our sisters going to hell brothers our relatives kind cousins well-meaning family members but as it is right now the truth of god's word is that they are going to hell pray for them Lord, save them. Save them. Save them. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Whether you believe it or not, Jesus is coming. Please pray for them in one minute. I know we've taken time, but this is too important. What then are we doing? Save their soul, oh God. Save their soul. Please pray for your father. Lord, let him not go to hell. Now that he's alive, there is still a chance. Pray for your drunkard brother. Lord, you have to do something about his salvation. Pray for your idol worshiping grandparents. Lord, they are kind. They love me. But they are going to hell. Save them, oh God. Are you praying? Let me tell you, if this is all we do tonight, it is important. There is nothing that stops Jesus Christ from coming this night. The gospel of the kingdom is already being preached. There is nothing that stops Jesus Christ from coming tomorrow morning.
Hallelujah. The last prayer point before we continue. Listen, look at me. I want to say something and I mean it from the depths of my heart. There are some of you here, the blood of your family members and your friends will be upon your head because you move around, you know Jesus and you love him, but you are afraid and ashamed. You don't want stigmatization. How can me, a fine girl, be involved in preaching? How can me, a bubble? All right, they are going to die. That's the problem. It has nothing with you being a preacher. And let me tell you, the Bible tells us that the rich man was in hell and he saw Lazarus. They communicated. You will be able to see your father and your mother. They will look at you. You will look at your roommates. You will look at people. You will see them. Let me tell you the truth. And they are going to ask you. They will say, Femi, you saw this thing. You didn't insist. You even asked me out. Yet you never preached to me. You taught me about prosperity. You taught me. Many of us who are preachers here. The blood of many people will be upon our heads. We taught about dimensions of revival. We taught about divine help. Rema, we healed the sick. There were all kinds of demonstrations of the spirit. But they, we did not confirm whether our members are going to make it. We had building projects. Project 10,000. Excellence. There was table, you cut cake. We dress well in suit. But the question is, in the final analysis, are you preaching to anybody? There are some of you, you have never opened your mouth to talk to anybody. You can share about revelation. You can share about marriage. You can give koinonia messages. You're on Facebook. You're on Twitter. You have all kinds of things. God gave you an opportunity. You have recharge card. Let me tell you something. In 2000, and was it three or four? I used to do something. I will never sleep until I send text messages to at least 10 or 15 people talking to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know them. I would just be calling numbers at random. I think that was when 2003, 4. That was when they started this GSM thing. I would just type in numbers at random and send. Just type a message about salvation. Not a condemning message, but a sincere message. There are some of you, you can make tracts you are waiting until the day you become a Jew. Some of us, our Facebook pages have become platforms for, for gossiping and making all kinds of noise. Yet our loved ones are going to hell. You are interested in a relationship with a lady. You don't even know whether she's going to heaven or hell. All you know is she's fine. Continue. Hallelujah. And you are there. God gave you beauty. All kinds of guys are coming. You don't want to fall your hand. And you never talk to them about Jesus Christ. Some of you get up and you allow people. You come for coin on and you just say, I'm going. And they say, okay. And it never occurs to you that if you come for coin on and the trumpet sounds, you will never see them again. You have no ministry. If souls are not being saved, you are not doing ministry. I don't care what you are doing. Our number one assignment is part of our mission statement. Massive salvation of souls. Not salvation of souls. Massive salvation of souls. When I see a man that needs to hear about Jesus and God grants me the grace, I will speak. If I cannot speak, I will do something. What is wrong with you going to the studio and going to pay 10 or 20,000 naira and just do a salvation message? You are not the name of any ministry. You say, what is the name of my own ministry? Must you have a ministry? Just go to the studio and do it a 20 minutes presentation of salvation or you and your friends contribute two to two two thousand five or ten people and just put it as an mp3 
we put all kinds of useless things. Um, this is Joshua Selman. I'm about to release my debut track, Nonsense, when there is room to preach the gospel first. How many of our gospel songs carry direct salvation messages? Have you, seen, have you discovered the way we are quietly deviating and nobody wants to attack the salvation thing? It looks old school, right? It doesn't look very attractive. So I rather push success. I'm not against success, brothers and sisters, but I repeat, if Jesus comes, nobody is carrying a kaki out of this realm. Are you, are, you, are you aware of that? You are not going to carry any shirt. All of these things, you will drop it behind. Whatever you have in your account is useless. You won't carry your awards. You won't carry your degree. You won't carry your marriage certificate. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. This is what drives me every day. I have dedicated my life, not just for ministry, to turn the hearts of many to righteousness. I don't care how much I'm misunderstood. I don't care how old school I sound. When Jesus comes in the final analysis, some of you are fellowship escorts. Some of you are pastors. When was the last time you truly preached? Do you know that we graduate people from Bible school and they don't know what the gospel is? They know the keys to wealth. They understand marriage counseling, conflict resolution, how to raise money for church, but they know nothing about winning souls. One more time before I continue. I've, this thing has touched my heart. This thing has touched my heart. Because this is the core, the pivot, the pivot of our Christian experience. If God makes you a millionaire and nobody is getting saved as a result of your millions, you will eat your money the day the church is raptured. If God gives you a platform, you have your small fellowship, your group, and you just feel we are only five, I think everybody is born again. Don't make assumptions. That's why I respect Papa E.E. Adeboye. If he holds a meeting between him and his wife, I'm sure he will still make an altar call. No assumption. No assumption. We preach powerful messages. And at the end of it, we don't care whether people are saved or not. One more time. Put a fire in my spirit. Let my mouth not be silent as far as preaching the gospel. Telling people that Jesus died for them and that there is judgment if they don't pay attention. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Some of you truly, when you started out with God, you were very serious as far as soul winning is concerned. You didn't even know that there was anything called anointing. But now you know that there is anointing. I will use everything that God has given me for the gospel. Pray. Prosperity. Grace. The knowledge of graphics. My knowledge of media. My beauty. Sister, pray. Tired of taking men to hell. Now I need to begin to take men to heaven. I will use my voice to sing. And I will keep singing until people come to Jesus Christ. Many of you need to repent on behalf of your groups and ministries. Open your mouth and ask the Lord for forgiveness. You've been doing a lot of activities. But they are not channeled towards soul winning. And you don't care. Open your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, my small fellowship in the village have not been preaching the gospel. I've been preaching many things. Not the gospel of salvation. Every other gospel is only useless or useful when the gospel of salvation has been preached. Some of us have little groups that we preach to occasionally. 
Where did you throw your evangelism zeal? It looked old school. And you've thrown it for something new. The Bible says, ask for the ancient part. Please pray. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out like the fire again. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out like the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out like the fire again. I just feel God wants us to stop here and press on this issue tonight. Carnal believers and the rest, we have to go we'll take on that one. Hallelujah. Whether you are going to kneel down or lie down in the next 10 minutes, I'd like you to write the names of five people. That we are going to intercede for their salvation. If this is what we do tonight. Go ahead and pray. Please cry to God. They must be saved. The natural man. I'm crying now. Write it. There is no man that Jesus cannot save. For as long as there is life, there is hope. Shake There is all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, please write it down. All about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. 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 It's all about you, Jesus. Jesus. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to pray in tongues like your life depends on it. And say, Lord, these five people must be saved. I must see them in heaven. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Whether you want to kneel down, cry, whatever it is, let there be a cry. They must be born again. My father will not go to hell. My father will not go to hell. My mother will not go to hell. Pray. Save my husband. Save my wife. Pray. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Sirah, Daria, 
when the trumpet sounds I must see them in heaven yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. They must be saved. They may be non Christians, but I travel. They must be saved. Revelations 20. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord is imparting a genuine passion for souls. Yeah. Revelations 20. From verse 10. Revelations 20, verse 10. Listen, listen, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever. Next verse. And I saw a great white throne, I saw it, I saw it. And he that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was no place found for them. Verse 12. I don't know what gospel you have been, heard, you have been preaching. I saw the dead, small and great, commissioners and houseboys, presidents and bike men, first class students. And those who did not pass jam, I saw them. I saw them. They stood before God. Every man must stand before God. And the books were open. What books? Your faithfulness in evangelism. Your giving. For those who have taught you that your works of righteousness are not important. Here goes the Bible. The works of men will be tried by fire. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Brothers and sisters, read the remaining part by yourself. One to read. And the dead were judged out of... That means there are things that are written. According to what? Next verse. And the sea gave up all the people who died by sea crash. And death and hell delivered all our uncles and aunties and politicians. It says, and they were judged, every man according to their works. 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And the Bible says, this is the second death. Let me show you something. Is there another verse? Go ahead. Verse 15. Everyone read. And hold on. And what? 
whosoever at that point your status will not matter again at that point your english your ordination will not matter your suit will not bail you out he said whosoever was not found written in the book of life there was no story end of discussion cast into the lake of fire whether it is your father whether it is your mother some of you if you don't pray you will watch your mother who gave birth to you you will watch her as the bible says depart from me and you will watch them cry to hell some of you will watch your uncles lift your voice and cry and say lord whatever it will take to stop them from going to this place of torment i cry tonight i love them too much i love my mother i love my father i love my brothers yeah. whosoever's name was not found in the book of life be it a president be it a governor whether you are a first class student two one student it will not matter again it won't matter how many parishes you have it won't matter how many rema you have hey, 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 hey. whether you are a member of koinonia or not is irrelevant i will stand for myself you will stand for yourself and I saw books open and another book was open yeah 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 intercede for them lord send angels send angels to my house send angels give them dreams give them encounters with jesus in their dreams they must be born again when all is said and done when all is said and done this is all that will matter yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Revelations 21. Verse 3. a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people 
and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. And God finally, brothers and sisters, a day will come when all is said and done in this life. God will wipe away the tears. The tears of mockery. Some people died out of cancer. Some died out of HIV. Some were martyred. They were standing for Jesus while they were killed. The Bible says on that day, that tears, the tears of mockery, holy, holy, the Lord will wipe that tears. The tears of the pain that you have to go through on account of the gospel. That men will not like you. Some of you would have been married since if you were not standing for God. But because of your faith, the Bible says God will wipe that tears and there shall be no more death, no more obituary, no more pain, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Listen. Listen. It's not enough that you are convinced that you will make heaven. I'm still saying it. We are going to pray. There are some of our loved ones, some of us come from backgrounds that are non-Christians and some of our loved ones are still there. We are going to pray and everyone will pray too. Give them divine visitations. Encounters with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, if Jesus came to die, an encounter is not too much to force any man to give his life to Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Encounters. Appear to them in visions like Saul on his way to Damascus. Lord, they will not die. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Rakata pakata badosh. Pray. Change my father. Change my mother. Some of them vowed that they will never give their hearts to the Lord. I like you to pray. It can change. Some of them are traditional worshippers. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Read your prayer request. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Claim their salvation in the name of Jesus. Some of them are religious people. The truth is they are not born again. They are not born again. Some of them belong to sects that will take them to hell. Occultic sects. Pray for them. Give them an encounter. Hallelujah. hallelujah I'll never forget one of our sisters she was a member of the worship team hallelujah I will never forget her touching testimony came from a completely non-christian background and she decided to give her life to Christ when she gave her life to Christ it was war and gradually, gradually, 
the Lord started doing his thing in the family. The brother gave his life to Christ. And then I think the mother, and it was remaining the father, and this lady would not give up. I will never forget that night when she called me crying and jumping around chapel and said, can you imagine my father, my father gave his life to Christ. She was jumping. See, there are some hardened people you see. You know that humanly speaking, they will never be born again. Don't try the power of the Holy Spirit. Think of how you were. Some of you think of what God brought you out of. Then you will know that there is no man that God cannot change. There is no man. God has changed occultists. God has changed hardened criminals. Some of you, you know where God brought you out from. If God could change you, if God could change you, we are still going to pray. You are going to say, Lord, put your word in my mouth. Because some of you, it's just you don't know what to say. But we are going to cry. Lord, let no one's blood be upon my head on that day. Put your word in my mouth. And grant me the boldness to declare the gospel. Go ahead and pray. your word in my mouth pray deliver me from shame deliver me from my ego deliver me from embarrassment hey 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 are you praying from the depths of your heart? You must start with your family members before you think of crusades and outreaches. Start with your family members. They must be born again. They must be born again. Rabata gada bala da bos, shom brado gado bala da bos. Rabata kapre da gede bala da bos. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. There are many avenues, many avenues to turn the hearts of men to righteousness. Number one. The ministry of intercession. There are some of you who pray a lot. But all you are praying is, Oh God, give me tea. God, give me bread. Add brew ban on the bread. That's, that's all our prayer. If, if, listen, if the scope of your Christian experience, there's, we'll do it another day. I really wanted to talk about the carnal man. And then we'll, there, there are scriptures that I prepare to touch. We can't, we can't do that. Our time is already gone. The slave to the flesh. That is the man of the flesh that can really not please God. That is another dimension. Maybe we'll consider that next week. Hallelujah. That you, you, you write the names of people and you're just going to fasting for one day. And it's not for yourself. How many of you have ever done that? To fast and it's not for yourself. If it's not for me, that's the flesh. That's the flesh. If it's not for my marriage, my, my lifting, my prosperity. Or that you go to prayer and say, Lord, you must save these souls. And you are not just pretending it. One thing that I know is that as much as God grants me grace and breath, no one's blood will be upon my head that day. No one will look at me and say, Joshua Selman, you had access to me, but you never spoke to me about Jesus. Do you know, listen, do you know what 
the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees said, they said, let his blood be on our head. Who taught them that principle? That the blood of a man can be upon the head of another. And that God would look and say, Ken, I gave you access. I gave you graces. And you ended up building an empire. Emoji. They invited you to travel around the world. They gave you water, ushers around, and you never, you were not concerned about the souls of men. There are men who will carry the blood of others on their head. Hallelujah. Oh, I must preach. Necessity is laid upon me. Some of us, the only reason why we cannot, I'm not talking of condemning people, but I'm talking of being passionate enough to trust God. Tell them what Jesus did in your life. There are some of you, you have never invited anybody to church, not once, the way you are like this. You don't care. It's not an issue at all. Yet we sing and we say, Lord, I love you. Yet we sing and we say, someday I'm going home. The Lord is speaking to us tonight. The Bible says the harvest is wide. But the laborers are few. He said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest. That he will send laborers. When Jesus came, he gave his assignment a business-like attitude. He said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me. Hallelujah. We just came back from a trip. And when I came, I couldn't even rest just to do everything and to come here now. Why all of this thing? Our flight was delayed. There were so many things. These guys have been tired. We left Bene Republic this morning by 5 a.m. in the morning. Headed to the airport. Our flight was shifted. And I can justify and say, Kite, God, you too, you know. But Paul said the love. He said, I, Paul, a bond servant. It looks like I'm in slavery, but no one is forcing me. There is love that constrains me. Little inconveniences for some of us. Little inconveniences for the kingdom. And we complain. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not against comfort. But I'm telling you, if it is because you want to be comfortable that you allow souls to die and you don't make spiritual progress, their blood will be on your head. Tomorrow morning, we're up teaching school of ministry students from there. We're headed to Zamfara. Coming back Monday morning straight into the counseling session. Why am I doing all this? Am I stupid or I don't know where a retreat center is? That I can just go and lie down and say, let me rest. What drives you, my brothers and my sisters? Please don't say you are a ministry. No. No. What is it that when you get up in the morning, truly, please take seriously what I'm saying. What drives you? What drives you? F power or fame? What drives your Christian experience? There are some of you, those around you, it's not like they are hardened. Nobody has preached to them. They've been coming to church you know they are not born again. You know they are not born again. Religion is not being born again. If they are not saved, they are not saved. Period. It's time to talk to them and tell them I, I want to talk to you. Is it too much to pay and invite them to a restaurant and talk to them about Jesus Christ? Can your 500 naira not go for the gospel? Will it kill you? Will it kill you? What is wrong with three or four of you coming and just praying for three days? Just praying and fasting. No group, no ministry, no nothing. Just to pray for souls genuinely. Ask people to submit the names of their unsaved ones and pray. After three days, that's all. Jesus said, if you do this to the least of my brethren. See, let me tell you, the day Jesus comes, we are going to be surprised. Because those you think are the greatest in the kingdom, 
you will be shocked to find out that they are not the greatest. Some of us, the men of God that you think will be the greatest, you will be surprised that some of us who have just barely made heaven, whereas there are people whose entire life, they don't have revelation, they don't have any rema, nobody's inviting them for any ministration, but their heart in life and in death has been committed towards the gospel. There are classmates of us that have never heard about Jesus Christ. We are ashamed. Sometimes when I pass through ABU campus, I look at the campus and I nod my head. Things have changed. Things have changed. The fire. Many of us are afraid to talk to people about Jesus. Okay, agree that you cannot go for all the crusades and the rest. What of your family members? You grew up knowing your father drinking and smoking and bowing to a God. Have you ever said, Daddy, there's something I want to discuss with you. Say, my father that I know, as if you don't know the Holy Spirit too. What if I talk to him and he insults me? Is that the reason why you will not talk? What if I talk to him and he stops giving me uh, pocket money? What if I tell the brother that this relationship is not born again and let me talk to him about Jesus Christ. Won't it cost me the relationship? I want to marry. Okay. Marry. There are some of us as you are looking at me right now. Even those you are in a relationship with are unbelievers. They are going to hell. You don't care. Who is he? He's a nice guy. Is he born again? And please, everybody is a sinner. If he's a sinner, he's a sinner. Your priority is not love. Your priority is salvation. Please hear what I'm saying. Because on that day, the Lord is going to ask you. Praise the Lord. One last prayer point. Lord, whatever I can do at this level to contribute to the advancement of the kingdom and soul winning, reveal it to me. Whatever I can do, if you can't preach, you can sow seeds. Please pray. Everybody must do something. What can I do for my family? Do I need to organize a get together? Do I need to celebrate my father's birthday for him so that he will be saved? What can I do at this level? Do I need to buy a card? Do I need to write an article for my family members? Do I need to produce tract? What can I do? At this level, don't say I cannot do anything. With the grace you have, there's something you can do. Please pray. Lord, you gave me a voice. I can sing with it. You gave me wisdom. I can use that as a platform. Lord, you bless me with finances. I can release my wealth for the kingdom. Lord, you gave me a car. My car can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a Babin saloon. It can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a restaurant. It can be used for the kingdom. Rakata Reveal to me what I can do at this level. It may not be much, but let me contribute. There's something I can do. I can pray. I can preach. I can finance the kingdom.
Hallelujah. Listen to me. I can go on my knees and beg you. Don't make this just an emotional thing. It's easy to just feel emotional and just say, wow. Because I spoke about hellfire and rapture and books. It's easy for you to be threatened. And then just carry the euphoria for one or two days and it dies back. Take this as a message God is giving you. No matter what you have done in ministry, if souls are not being saved, you are wasting God's time. Hallelujah. Please rise up and lift. If you wrote your prayer, your request, if it's in a book, just lift it up. I want to pray on it. Listen. You are the first agent that will follow up these people. Don't just pray for an anonymous man of God to evolve from anywhere. You are the man of God that God is authorizing tonight to start. Don't fear their faces. I'm not saying you should go and do stupid things without zeal. Or with zeal and without knowledge. Just jump into people's houses and inconvenience them. Start with your family members. Your family members will not kill you. At least you can start from there. Father, we repent in any way we have trivialized the issue of soul winning. And Lord, we know that this is in your heart and you decided to move us this direction. We want your heartbeat to become our heartbeat. We want your cry to become our cry. We want your passion to become our passion. Put a piece of your desire for souls in our hearts. And let it be a fire that nothing in this life can quench. Oh, we desire you. We desire you. Put that passion Lord, I stretch my hands towards these names. There are so many people who are going to hell whose names are written. Some of them are fathers, some are mothers. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we agree as a family of faith that beginning from tonight, let there be strange angelic visitations. Strange angelic visitations. Force them to go for crusades. May they go for meetings. May they encounter men and women of God. And Lord, we pray, especially for those who are not of the Christian faith. Lord, you know that humanly speaking, their minds are made up. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Angelic visitations. Encounters of Jesus Christ. As they sleep, they will see his face. As they sleep, they will see his face. In the name of Jesus Christ. As they sleep, they will see the cross. They will see the cross. It will follow them everywhere they go. We ransom their souls from the pit of hell. Lord, we will not stand in heaven and watch our loved ones enter that wide gate. Of hell we will stand and we will rejoice put a passion in us to win souls let it not just be a religious evangelical thing Lord remind us that if we do not win these souls and we let them die that their blood will be upon our heads I pray for everyone I kill timidity from your life. Whatever makes you ashamed of the gospel, I don't care what it is, whether your inability to communicate well, your poor background, complex that you have about yourself, that, that, that limitation is swallowed up tonight in the name of Jesus. May my God give you utterance. May my God give you utterance. May my God give you confidence. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
and I pray that you will not win souls and miss heaven yourself. I pray for everyone that the same way we are gathered in the earth like this, that is how we will see ourselves on that day. We will see ourselves and know ourselves. Therefore, I pray any manner of life represented here, listen to me, any manner of life that the devil is deceiving anyone into and making it look like it does not matter tonight that power of sin is broken over your life every association every wrong thing that can jeopardize your eternal destiny in the name of jesus christ receive grace to say no to every appearance of evil receive no to receive grace to say no to wicked and ungodly relationships receive grace to cut away from people who do not love god nor value his ways in the name of jesus christ and where you need to stand alone receive courage to stand alone where they mock you and say all kinds of things I release grace for you to still stand. I pray for you from the depths of my heart that every weight, every habit, every attitude you know that can destroy your Christian experience and rob you of the opportunity. I don't care what it is and how long it has been. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that that life of pretense dies tonight. Restoration. Restoration. Of the place of prayer. Step in to set the captives free. Kade.
charge in the spirit. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force holding my life, holding my family, holding my destiny by the power of the Holy Ghost, you must let me go now. Lift your voice and pray.
will arise tonight as the God of Joshua. The one that arrives, he rides upon the wings of the sea. Listen, as you shout that name, it's not a ritual. All I see in this room now is just fire. And I know that the Lord is going to descend with a shout like the warrior that he is. Are we together now? Whether you are in the main auditorium, overflow one, two, three, four by the road, following online, I want you with the simplicity of your childlike faith to shout that name, Jesus, and that fire will come upon you. Or just let's have your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic mantle, and I decree and declare it's time to challenge and confront the gates of darkness. It's time for the sons of Jacob to possess their possessions. It's time for families to be restored. Therefore, Lord, as we lift up the shout to hear in the spirit, I pray in the name of Jesus that every power and every source responsible for the retrogression in anyone's life and destiny it's time for it to be here. Are you ready now? One, two, three. I command that spirit. I command that devil. Bring them out. Shako, Shako, Shabarikata. That shout. I dismantle gates. I cause yokes and ordinances. ministering very powerfully I'm still praying over delay listen very carefully I'm still praying over delay many of you do not even know that currently is delay in your ministry in your life any dimension you should have entered but have not entered is delay I say it again I stretch my hands by this anointing in the name of Jesus let the fire that will end delay fall upon you now let the fire that will end delay fall upon you now let the fire that will end delay fall upon you now Says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest I want to pray I don't know what keys results from our lives there are many well-meaning believers there are many well-meaning individuals you have hands but you can't eat you, there is a song we used to sing growing up it says some have food but cannot eat 
some can eat but have no food this, this is the category I want to address now you have capacity but no results gifted but not rewarded gifted but not blessed anointed but no one is placing a demand on your grace shalakatos shalakatos mashalakatos keteketeke shedeketa ente rokas kobara hashedekete balakata shkabarato zanda takato shadia epeketo zata makatos kabarakatos ente sekete zeketa japaru kasabadakata ente koto sharakata in the name of jesus i decree and declare whatever has hindered your productivity may the fire of the holy ghost separate you and that spirit now separate you and that spirit now there's a category of people god is ministering to me right now just just walk with me you always do the wrong things there is a spirit that makes you do the wrong things the wrong business the wrong relationship the wrong friends you don't know why everything in your life when there is trouble that's when you come anything good happening you will go away from it to evil he says he says the lord's prayer lead us not into temptation that means a man can be led into temptation and he said deliver us from evil lead us not a businessman can be led into destruction led into temptation a precious anointed lady with a great destiny can be led into temptation lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil listen one of the most treasured gifts that you must covet in your life is the ability to hear god clearly the times we live in now guess what will punish you again and again he said the lord is my shepherd and i shall not want here's how i quote it if the lord is my shepherd then i shall not want when you are many of us hear demons clearly you hear spirits clearly you hear voices nonsense voices clearly you don't need to pray to hear them but do you know that many of us now even our dreams have been hijacked and manipulated you don't even know whether it's god speaking now or not they come as an appearance of light but the message is not consistent with the integrity of god so you don't even know what to believe again dreams are prophetic avenues for the speakings of god to reach the saints but they can be hijacked and manipulated by the powers that be a lady can be manipulated to reject her husband a gentleman can be manipulated to reject his wife a person can be manipulated to reject his voice he is job there are many people they got jobs a spirit told them leave they thought it was god and they left it i'm seeing the lord is showing me a vision be sensitive something will happen here now and i'm seeing people in the realm of the spirit but i'm not seeing ears imagine like a man no ears this is what i'm seeing now i understand by this vision what the bible says he that hath an ear physically we are supposed to have ears but right now in the name of jesus this is not for everybody hold on i'm praying right now there is a grace that will open the hearing of people i stretch my hands lord where are they the men and women that need to hear you in this season for ministry to move forward i stretch my hands representing the hands of god and i command the hearing ears be open now please help them be open now be open now for business be open now for ministry be open now for your career be open now hallelujah 
and isaac sowed in that land he sowed in a specific there is a geography to increase it doesn't just happen everywhere there are people today if the devil wants to destroy them he will give them visa to uk they will think his breakthrough not every open door is anointed there are times the devil destroys you by opening doors it's not always closed doors there are open doors that, that are open doors towards doom he said there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death mm. thou shall show me the path of life he said for it is in your light that we see light we're going to cry for divine direction many destinies are tied down now because of divine direction or lack of it lord what is the next phase of my life you can't remain like this and just sit down what is the next season what is your blueprint lift your voice and pray show me oh god i buy into the mind of the spirit what is your communication for my ministry for my life in this season i don't want to be found where you were i want to be found where you are pray he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying not what he said what he's saying what he's saying what he's saying he said the spirit speaketh expressly not the spirit spoke the spirit speaketh expressly direction okay. listen listen let me talk to us a little especially i know that a generation of young people were very proud we just believe that just because we went to school we can determine the course of our lives with intelligence now destiny is not just academics and education you must cry part time per second for revelation this ministry by the grace of god we are where we are because not just because of the ability to hear god but the ability to stay until he says move tiredness can tell you to move weariness can tell you to move he said if your presence goeth not with us don't send us from here oh god we are not going do you know it is costly to go without god it's cheaper the pain of your waiting is cheaper than the pain of knowing that you are where God is not there are men of God that started well but people encourage you and say this is how they do it in ministry when you get to this level this is the next step and you foolishly took a step a step that ate away your destiny and your progress and your blessing hallelujah it matters that we understand times and seasons and that we can wait until God says move I remember after our second crusade in this ministry the next year we we're discussing and they say where are we going I went to the Lord and the Lord said you are not going anywhere and I said okay we're not going anywhere ah, but I thought we would do it every year <clears throat> be careful the ritual of religion can destroy you God used to do this way it doesn't mean he has to do it the same way the most important thing is let it be him doing it treasure of my heart and of my soul in my weakness you are merciful redeemer of my past and present wrong you're the holder of my future days to come nothing in this world says jesus you're the calm that won't run dry we live our lives being in a hurry is not the same thing as speed God is a God of speed I don't know why I'm preaching this now 
this is part of the miracle service god is the god of speed but god is not the god of rush there is a difference between speed and rush many of us the spirit of god is speaking to someone here you need to calm down the way you are running with your life you are going to land in trouble the way you are running with ministry you will land in trouble the way you are approaching marriage the way you are approaching destiny you will land in trouble culture and the sociological um, context of our living can mount pressure on us to run ourselves to the ditch my soul wait thou upon the lord god is a god of speed but until he speaks you are on your own it's amazing how you can be running for many years and find out that you are not moving running but not moving and here comes a man as weak as he is but he can walk at the pace of god and more can be achieved in one month with god than 10 years alone have you not learned the excellency of walking with god he said for with god all things without god outside of god there are things that are not possible apostle my life i don't want to be a failure age is already um, not on my side i must make sure that i build a house now i must and god is saying calm down son you have handed your life over to me let me be lord of your life i say lord you don't know the pressure that is coming from my family let's be careful satan comes to attack us at the points of our vulnerability and hijacks us don't miss the series on friday we're rounding up the deliverance series are we together god is already speaking that's what leads many of us to this life of hustling putting your hand in everything and just rushing around and they say why say man must work all those nonsense cliches must get out of your life and your mind if god does not lead me i'm not going nowhere you may call me irresponsible but let me die waiting my soul waits down upon the lord it's now a foreign experience to many of us to wait gone are the days that people say i'm i'm waiting now, people just think waiting is fasting from six to six waiting means waiting the bible says except the lord builds a house listen very carefully it says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city man of god listen businessman he says he says the watchman watched but in vain and my bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow only to eat the bread of sorrow i'm speaking to someone be tired of the bread of sorrow the bread of sorrow does not feel the bible says he gives his beloved sleep there are many pastors that just get up and feel anointed and just want to rent one small auditorium and punish themselves punish their wives punish the few people that believe in them because they think ministry is just about opening a place and then we have the gods to tell people come it's not that way paul a man approved of god jesus a man approved of god is god speaking to us we need to have results in our lives we're still praying but you see god is not a herbalist now there are systems there is a way that he works and one of the way that he works is to direct men and thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it walk ye in it and you will find rest for your soul Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying now? It matters. God is interjecting this miracle service to just minister to someone and say you are, you are hurrying up too much. You think it's breakthrough. You are running. You will soon find out that you've been around the same jungle. For someone after this service, you need to go and calm down with your life and say, I've been running since 2005. What have I done with my life? Absolutely nothing. Oh, come Lord Jesus come and direct me give me direction are we together 
the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong not even bread for them that are wise when a man subscribe to the direction of god your life may look controversial for a while but all that will be before you is beauty and glory then your life will become beulah and hefzibah the delight of the nations the excellency of waiting the hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait it's easy to rush it's easy to do a lot of things you will make more mistakes in your life rushing there is power in waiting are we together there is power in waiting we're going to pray for the sick now there's a lot to do tonight but listen very carefully if this message is for you then i want you to receive it from the depth of your heart you know when we come like this there are various things that the lord is doing to several people not everyone is sick not everyone is oppressed but a word can come and god says be careful there are people about to relocate now to regions they've not sought god they just assumed let me tell you something brothers and sisters there is no place on earth called greener pastures greener pastures is a spiritual location is where the voice of god for you is god is already helping someone how many nigerians smuggled their way through the desert trying to get to lands because they believe the only difference between your locality and any locality in the world is a greater propensity to discern appreciate and reward value that's all they have a greater propensity to discern to appreciate and to reward value you can be where you are if you are truly directed by god and he will come to you and bless you are we together now how many of you are trusting the lord to touch you or touch your loved ones we're going to do it very fast because the second session of this prayer i want to settle down and really really pray seriously and just dismantle a number of things in our lives the grand finale will be on friday but then you are here we're going to pray for the sick now i promise that we'll do that very early so that we can finish and then attend to other issues now you may not be sick listen carefully but if you are a man of god is an opportunity to watch lord what are you doing how does this thing work what can i learn you must remain a student we're all students in the school of the spirit ever learning but in this case in that learning coming to the knowledge of the truth are we together you are trusting god for a healing miracle if you are in overflow one now hold on i want to specifically minister to barren people myself so if you have any case of barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three please i want to minister to you myself please make your way very quickly and come stand you're trusting god for a miracle let's do it very very fast there is a lot to do very fast the worship team will lead us and just charge the atmosphere for us while we do this very fast and then at the same time to save time at the same time your your requests your prayer requests if you're here and you're you're yet to write your prayer request go ahead you can spare a few minutes to just write it now please listen listen very carefully except whoever is laying hands on you maybe asked you or prophesies to you or does whatever you just once they touch you just go back to your seat some of you i noticed they touch you and you move to the other side of the line and still stand it's unbelief praise the lord or you are saying okay you don't know my problem is here and you are touching here the lord is showing me something about this woman <laughs> You don't have fallopian tubes at all oh my god they've removed it your husband got another wife creator of the universe what can you do
brothers and sisters let me tell you something i'm not trying to embarrass this precious lady i don't know you i'm just seeing you for the first time i'm not a woman so i can't pretend to say i know what is happening here but for a woman to not have fallopian tubes all removed and now it has scattered your marriage let me ask you a question and i'm asking it boldly do you believe that god can give you new fallopian tubes where are you coming from madam let me tell you there is a god that sits in heaven god is not a herbalist he's a miracle worker put your hand on your stomach look at me shout jesus as loud as you in the name of jesus father that's all right i decree and declare brand new fallopian tubes the god that doeth wonders brand new fallopian tubes i say it again brand new fallopian tubes madam allow for some time and go and check yourself in the hospital give jesus praise please help this woman it's an elderly woman help her help her social life. In the name of Jesus, Mama God is delivering you in Jesus' name. The Lord is showing me somebody. Just, just hold on. You, you will sing, you will go back to your singing. I just want to. I'm seeing the someone, the power of God is going to come upon you here. You are here right now on the line. I want to prophesy to that person. I, I just saw a flash of light, a very strong anointing. Bring the person. The Lord is rolling away the reproach in your life. And the Lord is telling me he's breaking the power of witchcraft over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I declare to you, not only will you or your brother be healed, I decree and declare salvation comes to your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ please sing for us that song creator of the universe creator of the universe what can you do what can you do
looking at you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing fibroid. Is that true? How long? Seven years. Fibroid. Confirmed in the hospital. That devil is going to leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you have children, ma? I'm not married. You are not married? Oh my God. Now you be God, Almighty God.
that won't be said. You are the God that makes the means of war. You are the God that makes the blind see. You are the God that makes me be Sing it. You are the God. You are the God. 
Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.